In the, in the during the summer of 1900, you got when the, you know, Francis Bannerman found out about this island and he made the deal on buying it, and so he built this warehouse complex. Um, he also did build a powder house right down where the boat went, came in. Now that powder house, well, okay. So the construction started out here in 1901 stayed busy until 1918 when he actually died. After he died in 1918, no further building occurred on the island. In 1920, like I said, there was a powder house down by where you came off, uh, disembarked, and that did blow up. They don't know what caused that to blow up, but huh. um, the when it did blow up, this is what it kind of looked like. And that's kind of the rubble that was left afterwards. These doors were supposedly found still chained together over on the east shore here. A lot of the residents in the area said they had windows blown out from the concussion, the you know, the explosion. Uh, Francis Bannerman's wife happened to be out on a hammock up in front of the residence. It was a hot August day. She had just gotten up to go inside to get herself a glass of lemonade when the explosion occurred. When she came back out, a piece of debris had gone right through the hammock she'd just been lying in. So, wow. you know, good for her, you know. <laughs> and so she uh, helped the workers uh, put out small fires that had started. As well. Nobody was killed as a, as a result of the explosion, but did create a bit of damage. And some of it they repaired, some of it they just kind of didn't really address that. Another problem they had is when he was building a lot of this, there weren't any building codes. So, and a lot of it was like he would sketch something out and have his workers build it. If he liked it, it stayed. If he didn't, he'd have it altered. Uh, one of the other things, like at the number three warehouse over there, when he built that, he, uh, he's, he had been over to Belgium and he had seen the entrance to the fortress in Antwerp, Belgium, so he sketched it out and this is what they built. So, you know, huh. they, they followed it pretty closely. And uh, so that, that's, if you look, when you come back down by the number three warehouse, you can kind of get a look and similar to that, you know, obviously. The place over the years has suffered a lot of um, uh, deterioration. So, you know, because at one point you had a, you know, a nice elaborate structure like that. And when was this photo? From this 30s, This has got to be 40s? probably in the 20s, my guess would be. Because the, the walkway is still all intact. Yeah. yeah. And that just started um, to erode with the yeah. water? That's why it well, yeah, disappeared? Well, yeah, over years, you know, here's another shot of this a little bit closer up, you know. And that would have been just down here when they docked right at the base of the yeah, castle. this is when you came through these gap towers. That's what you would have seen in front of you. Okay. And, uh, again, this is where, you know, you would have come up through here. down. You see kind of like a yep. metal work down here. They would come up through this portcullis and up to they had a drawbridge that they could raise and lower the portcullis they could raise and lower uh, the big nice. artillery pieces sat on the uh, what they called an artillery dock out front another thing that was interesting about Francis Bernard is he wasn't terribly good with right angles you look at the number <laughs> three warehouse there and <laughs> that's that's not quite exactly square. So this was the number three warehouse? This is the number three. This is where the number one warehouse is. There's that uh, north gate that I was showing you a moment ago. And this was the, you know, the castle structure again. But well, this is still up, right? Yep. This is still up. In fact, you can read most of that right. along there. Any danger of this falling over? Well, I can't say it's there isn't. Say. You know, obviously it's a slightly smaller, you know, um, so far, not, we're not seeing too many indications of it, you know, getting ready to go, but also we don't it's hard to know with old run concrete. tours through there either because the state just wouldn't allow us to do that. For a while, they were enforcing hard hat tours, you know, and although we weren't bringing people into the structure, you know, they insisted we wear hard hats in case something you fell down. It, well, <laughs> it wouldn't help much. Yeah, exactly. And we didn't, we didn't Make it easier to find you. You know, we got down maybe where that uh, 
wall is there, but we weren't really walking up onto the front. So steps nobody there. climbs those stairs there and over that little no, archway. No, none of our tour groups do. Occasionally, those volunteers of us that are doing some work around here once in a while will get kind of trusting and, and venture up on there. <laughs> That bridge goes over up into the third floor, goes through to the second floor, and then down, there's another entrance down on the first floor. The first three levels were used for warehouse. The upper two were open. Uh, on the fourth floor, they used to make sales on that. Up on the fifth floor, they used to keep chickens, and I hear the kids also played tennis. But Francis Bannerman, he was, you know, military surplus, but he had wanted at some point to create a museum of the lost arts where he wanted people to uh, study, excuse me about that man, but he wanted people to study the instruments over time that we'd use to, you know, hurt, kill, and maim people, and hopefully we'd get disgusted with warfare and not practice it. So this is what he wanted to do, was establish this museum he never got around to doing that, but we're thinking the upper two floors is where he was kind of thinking about doing that. Um, when you say open, there were still windows. It's just that there, there was an open it was span. was just open space inside, okay. yeah. Neat. And like I said, when that explosion occurred, it took out the majority of the windows on these structures. And some of them they replaced, others they just temporarily boarded up. And uh, all, you know, the... Uh, Scottish Castle influences from his Scottish background. And another thing that's kind of interesting about the way they built this castle is as he goes up, you kind of see how there's more brickwork to give it the facade that it's actually get, getting larger as it goes further up. Hmm. You know, the overall structure internally never changed, but it did give you that impression that keep on it. Uh, well, Kurt, I appreciate all your time. This has been awesome. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. You answered a lot of questions. hope I answered what you wanted, and I hope I didn't mislead you on anything. I didn't intend to. Oh, no, no, no. Gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsite.com.